This is episode zero of the Cybersecurity 101 training series. This training series was actually inspired by a comment that we received through the community uh, from Darnell Knight. And it says, being new to hacking in this channel would be great just to learn where to start. It's very overwhelming. It would be helpful, for, helpful if each session and lesson was in some type of chronological order so I, and maybe others, knew where to start. Then what lesson or task is next, video-wise, or number them to kind of create a career path. This channel is cool as fuck, etc., etc. Sorry for the cussing. Um, and essentially, uh, just like any of the other really cool pieces of content that came through this channel, um, this is what this entire training series is about as a response to Darnell. So number one, Darnell, thank you so much for the comment. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I will do my very best absolutely to make sure that there is no commercial bug that catches this channel and we strictly focus on content and uh, you know, the, the only way that this channel is going to earn revenue is by the, the ads that YouTube puts on the channel and uh, hopefully by the Hackholics Anonymous membership community. And that's basically it. I'm not, I plan on just strictly going as heavy as I can with value and content on this channel. And so as a response to this comment, that's why we're going to the Cybersecurity 101 uh, path and training series. And I essentially just kind of skipped this when I was creating all the videos for this channel because I was more focused on going into the advanced stuff because I had already gotten my CYSA certification. And this, this, the 101 stuff wasn't really that big of a deal to me. And I was making this channel for myself. It wasn't even, I didn't think that it was going to turn into a community. And then people started subscribing to the channel and I was like, yo, okay, this is kind of crazy. But I was already way too deep into the advanced stuff. So I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it is about time to actually go back to the very, very beginning. And Darnell's comment was kind of the comment that like, you know, was that the, the last straw on the camel's back kind of a thing. And I was like, all right, so let's go down the very, very, very starter path and start from the very top, from the very, very beginning. So that's what this whole Cybersecurity 101, SciSec 101 training series is going to be. And it's going to be its own playlist and it's going to be numbered. So this is episode zero technically, which means it's just an introduction. And then we're going to go through all of these different modules and all the different things so that you know what the, the syllabus is, so to speak, and what we're going to be covering on this path. And then I'll drop this video with the actual first episode uh, so this will be episode zero and then episode one. Both of those are going to come at the same time. And most likely I'm going to drop one video per week when it comes down to this particular path, because I still have a lot of other video content that I have scheduled to drop and I'm working on for the, the intermediate and advanced people. So uh, I will do my very best to do at least one video per week on this particular path so that you have the SciSec 101 training series and playlist available to you. So now what we can do is we are actually going to go through all of these various modules so you can understand what we're going to be covering and then uh, we'll, we'll just get into the training. Okay, so the first module is essentially an introduction to all of the various categories of cybersecurity. So we have offensive security and defensive security. And then there's going to be a room that I haven't done yet, which is called search skills. And then we're going to go through all of that stuff. And that'll be the very first one that's going to fall under start your cybersecurity journey. And then we're going to have Linux fundamentals and Linux fundamentals I've already done and there should actually be videos attached to these rooms. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of this content again and I'm going to approach it with the perspective and with the intention of teaching a newbie. So teaching the brand new person that has no idea what to do. And instead of just kind of reading through the content just for my own reference, I'm going to speak spend a lot of that energy on actually teaching so that you understand fully what Linux is and what the fundamentals of Linux are. And then we're going to go through Windows and Active Directory fundamentals. And Windows is the biggest uh, operating system that exists on the planet right now. More than 80% of businesses use Windows and probably a lot of consumers as well. So Linux is more for the people that uh, maybe in the server world, maybe for the people who are in the pen testing world. 
um, and it is an open source operating system, so it's free and you get access to everything that comes with it. There is a there are some paid versions, for example, the Red Hat Linux series. So there are some paid versions of Linux, but for the most part, it's an operating system that you can get from the Kali Linux website for free, install it on a USB drive and take it anywhere with you. And I've actually done that. So it's a very, very powerful tool. But Windows is the platform. It's the operating system that the grand majority of enterprise environments use. And what we're going to learn is the basics of Windows, so the fundamentals of Windows, as well as the fundamentals of Active Directory, which is a very big deal when it comes down to system administration and user provisioning. And so you understand what that is. So we'll be going through the, the file system, for example, user access control, and then the various uh, other elements of Windows, like the Windows registry, the configuration settings, the UAC settings. Um, we'll be going through the Windows security, BitLocker, and things like Windows Update, and of course, Active Directory. And Active Directory is one of these things that if you learn how to do it under the system administrator side, you will be solid and you'll probably get a lot of opportunities presented to you because a lot of companies mostly need somebody who can be their Active Directory administrator. And uh, you'll be assigning new employees that come in, you'll be updating employee roles, you'll be removing employees, permissions to certain objects in the domain, so on and so forth. So Active Directory is a really big piece, but also on the pen testing side, understanding the basic of Active Directory makes you a better hacker. It makes you a better pen tester because again, more than 80% of businesses have Active Directory and they have Windows. So if you know how to hack Active Directory, you'll be a really, really good pen tester. You'll be a really good hacker. And then we're going to go into the Windows command line and actually or the command line module in general. And then the first one of that is going to be the Windows command line, which is CMD. And then Windows has a more advanced command line called PowerShell, which is more for scripting based on what I've experienced. And there's already a lot of ingrained and in pre-embedded scripts that come with PowerShell. They call them commandlets that do a lot of really neat things inside of Windows. But then the, the, the basic raw command line is called the CMD. And then we have PowerShell that's also a part of Windows. And then there's the Linux shell or the Linux terminal Linux command line. And the Linux shell is very similar to Mac OS shells. So the languages for Linux and Mac OS are very similar because they are operating based on the Unix uh, original operating system. They kind of derived from that operating system. So Linux and Mac OS are very similar operating systems. And Mac OS kind of updated a few things for themselves because obviously they wanted some proprietary things. But uh, a lot of the commands are very similar to each other. Very, very basic would be uh, DIR is dir to d list the things that are inside of the directory. That's for Windows. And then Linux and Mac OS is LS to list. So that is how you can kind of uh, come to the conclusion that Linux and Mac OS are the same. And I mean, I, I use a lot of the commands that I learned for Linux inside of my Mac, which is the computer that I record on. So those I know for a fact that those operating systems are very similar to each other. And so are the bash versions and the command lines that the commands that go inside of the bash command line. So that is the command line module that we're going to go through. And then we're going to go into networking and networking is a very big deal. So one of the prerequisites that you have to get before you get into the CYSA or the cybersecurity studies is network plus. So there's a plus there is network plus and there's security plus and then there is CYSA plus. And my counselor didn't tell me about any of that stuff. And he just signed me up for CYSA. And I had not taken a plus security plus or network plus. So when I went into that class, the teacher started talking about all of these concepts in networking. And I'm like, it literally just all of it went over my head. I'm like, yeah, I don't understand what's going on. And when I told him this, he's like, you do know that this is a like, he gave me the list of the prerequisites on the registration He's like, you do know that you're supposed to know all of these things. So as I was studying for CYSA, I had to study for A plus network plus and security plus at the same time to be able to understand everything that was going on in the CYSA certification exam. So networking is a really big deal. Um, because I mean, if you don't understand the basics of networking, you're not going to know what you're doing when you're running a network map or scan an nmap scan, or when you're running Wireshark, or when you're doing the TCP dump or any of these things, you just aren't going to get what's happening, because you need to know what networking is. And uh, thankfully, uh, 
the wonderful people at TryHackMe already accounted for this. So there's a giant module associated with networking and dedicated to networking. So we have just networking concepts like the ISO TCP IP model, ISO OSI, then networking essentials, then we have network core protocols. Uh, we have the TLS, SSH, and VPN secure protocols, which are very, very important. And then Wireshark, which there's already a room on it, but then we're going to review it again. Um, there's already a video on it is what I mean. Uh, the, but we're going to just review it again just to make sure that you have access to all of that information from the perspective of somebody learning as a beginner. And then we have TCP dump, which is the command line interaction with all of the network traffic that comes in. And then finally, we have Nmap and the basics of the network mapper. And all of that is going to fall under the networking module of the SciSec 101 training series. And then we're going to get into all the fun stuff. So cryptography, I mean, everything up until this point, I would think is fun too. But cryptography is where the hacking concept and the cybersecurity concept really kind of starts getting into play and understanding what cryptography is. And this is a concept that is as old as language and time itself. Uh, cryptographs were things that were created inside tombs in ancient Egypt and a lot of these uh, places that have, you know, treasures hidden behind these traps and so on and so forth. So cryptography is a really, really big deal. And understanding the basics of cryptography, what it actually is, symmetric and asymmetric encryption, um, then public key cryptography, which falls under the RSA uh, ciphers. And then we have hashing, understanding what hashes are and the basics of hashing. And then, of course, John the Ripper, which is one of the most powerful hacking tools. And it's used for password cracking and cracking hashes and maybe even RSA keys or SSH keys. So John the Ripper, really, really powerful tool. There was an entire video dedicated to it. But in this specific module, we're going to be going through the cryptography association of the basics of John the Ripper. So cryptography, really, really cool module. And it's kind of it's going to get a little bit more fun as we go along the rest of this path here. Next would be exploitation. So moniker link, which is a CVE, a common vulnerability, um, leak users credentials using the vulnerability for moniker to bypass outlooks protected view. So this is going to be the first thing that we're going to do in the exploitation room. Um, and then there's the Metasploit introduction, really powerful Metasploit exploitation, really powerful Metasploit is another one of those tools that is absolutely necessary. If you want to go into pen testing and hacking, you have to know how to use Metasploit. Um, and then there's the Meterpreter or Meterpreter. I, I don't know how you would pronounce that. I call it Meterpreter. Um, but the Meterpreter uh, module of Metasploit. And then there's the Blue Room. Uh, which is just an exercise that we're going to do in hacking Windows, and it's part of the exploitation basics. So uh, when you learn more about the Lockheed Martin series of attacks and what you need to do to actually penetration test or attack and hack somebody, one of the big things that one of the top three uh, steps, I believe it is reconnaissance. And then after reconnaissance, it would be weaponization. And then from weaponization, it goes into exploitation. So exploitation is when you take all the information that you've gathered through your reconnaissance and you weaponize that information and then exploit the specific vulnerability that you learned about when you were doing your recon. So exploitation is a really Really big deal in cybersecurity and even if you're going to go into just defensive security and you want to be a security analyst and you want to go become a CISO whatever it is you need to know exploitation because you need to think like a hacker essentially as you get more advanced down this path you just need to get better at thinking like a hacker because if you know how to do that then you know how to protect your systems against potential hacks that happen so exploitation really really important and then of course we're going to go into web hacking and web hacking is where a lot of stuff is kind of meeting the the road like where the rubber meets the road especially these days because most uh, systems and most computers and most uh, environments i should say most environments most virtual machines all of these things exist on a cloud platform now which are accessed through some kind of a web application that has its own apis and then you need to understand what databases exist on there and everything for the most part operates through a website so you're getting access to this video on a website i'm accessing this content that you're seeing in front of you through a website and i have a personal website and then i have a business website 
and there's a million other types of websites that you interact with on a daily basis and web applications that you interact with and even the applications that are on your cell phone are still considered web applications or web hacking that you would be learning about as you go into this world and being an application tester so application penetration tester or application security analyst or analyst or a uh, cloud security analyst all of those things fall under the the same general guidelines so learning about things like javascript or sql which is the standard query language that is associated with databases um, burp suite which is a penetration testing tool is just specifically designed for web applications and of course the OWASP top 10 list. The OWASP top 10 is Open uh, Web Application Security Protocol or program, I believe. Uh, and that top 10 list gets updated every couple of years with the most recent series of web attacks and web vulnerabilities that are being targeted by hackers. And it just gets updated constant, constantly all the time. And that's something that you need to be fully aware of. If you're going to go into web application security and somebody asks you about OWASP top 10 and you don't know what it is, like the back of your hand, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So web application and web, web hacking all has to do with the various exploitations and vulnerabilities that can exist through the OWASP top 10 and then just everything else that has to do with that web applications. So we're going to learn about the basics of web applications. For example, the hypertext transfer protocol, uh, protocol which is HTTP, and an HTTPS, which is the secure version of that, what a URL is, what a request is, when a request method is made towards a website or from a website, response codes that come from those requests, and of course, the headers of website that come back. And then you have the essentials of JavaScript, which is one of the most important important languages uh, next to HTML. JavaScript is the next most important language when it comes down to web development and web hacking. And then you have SQL fundamentals, and then we have the basics of Burp Suite and then OWASP top 10. And there's an entire series that I did on Burp Suite. I've done the video on OWASP top 10. But again, we're going to be approaching all of this from the perspective of SciSec 101 and teaching you exactly what these things are. So the, the descriptions and the teachings in these videos that are going to be up and coming is going to be really, really detailed and really outlined. So if you're an advanced viewer, most likely this isn't, go this isn't going to apply to you, but I would say go through it anyway, because you always learn more when you go back to the fundamentals. Uh, when I was starting uh, martial arts and studying martial arts, I was super excited about learning all of the advanced techniques. And then when I got my black belt and when I started competing and fighting, I've been fighting for 15 years now. When I started competing seriously and I got past my 10th year in fighting, I realized how important the very, very basics and the fundamentals are to making all of your advanced moves come to life. So it's very important for you to understand the basics of all of these things. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Basically, basics. Basically, the basics are very important, right? So uh, the next piece is going to be offensive security tooling. So uh, we are talking about offensive security, specifically offensive security tools. And this is where, again, it becomes really exciting. I love offensive security, so this is like one of my favorite topics. And tools like Hydra or GoBuster or SQL Map are going to be one of the most visited and most used tools that you're going to go to when you go into offensive security. And Hydra is a uh, pen testing tool for password hacking, but it's designed mostly for brute forcing or attacking actual web forms or websites, maybe even secure shell ports. And Hydra is a really, really important tool. John the Ripper is mostly used with hash uh, uh, algorithms that you get or the specific hash values that you would get or finding an RSA key or an RSA file and trying to decrypt that or uh, hack into that using that piece. But Hydra goes into the actual logging on portion of it or brute forcing and uh, obtaining a website's credentials. You're attacking the actual live IP address or the website itself. GoBuster is all about enumeration. And there are several videos that I've done. I don't think I've actually done a specific video dedicated to GoBuster. So I've used it in a lot of the videos that we've gone through, but I don't think I've done a video 
just to GoBuster. So this is actually a really good thing for me that I'm excited about doing it. So GoBuster is an enumeration tool that helps you understand how to find directories or hidden directories or hidden files or hidden uh, subdomains or uh, sub networks, I should say, that are associated with an IP address or a website. And then we have the shell overview as far as what you would be doing in offensive pen testing or offensive security in regards to shells themselves. So we already talked about, you know, the Windows shell, PowerShell, and of course the Linux shell, but now we're gonna be looking at it from the perspective of offensive security. And then we have SQL map, which is designed for mapping out the structured databases of a server or a network or a website, which is also very important because usernames for their employees or usernames for their clients or the passwords of their employees or the passwords of the clients or credit card information for uh, clients are all stored inside of the SQL databases that are sitting on a specific website or a web server. So it's a very, very powerful language to understand. And of course, a very powerful concept for you to master when you go into offensive security and pen testing. Defensive security and defensive security I feel like that should have gone first before offensive security, but defensive security, obviously we have the intro of it. Uh, there's going to be SOC fundamentals, which stands for the Security Operations Center. And then a lot of jobs that you're gonna see when you go into cybersecurity job board boards are going to be the SOC analyst. And then there's a SOC analyst one, two, or three. So SOC fundamentals is very important. Security operations and the Security Operations Center, the fundamentals of that are very, very important. And then going into digital forensics, which happens after the fact that an incident has taken place. So there's an incident responder, which is right here as well. So I feel like, again, incident response should have come first because first you're going to respond to the incident when something is happening. Once the incident has happened and it's passed, you need to go do digital forensics. And you've probably heard of forensics before. Uh, they use it a lot in cop shows and you know these investigative shows. And digital forensics has to do with everything that happens on the website or the computer. And you're going to know you need to learn how to uh, approach that entire concept. For example, the chain of custody when it comes down to evidence and how to actually get an image of a computer so that it doesn't get messed with as it goes through the chain of custody and how to make sure that it's not messed with and nobody's altered that uh, image that you got from the disk, so on and so forth. So digital forensics, really important. Incident response, really, really important. And of course, logs. Logs have to do with both of these things. Uh, logs get fed into something like a security information and event manager so that you can respond to an incident in a live environment or an intrusion detection system so that you can respond in an incident in a live environment. And then when you're doing digital forensics, you're going to go through a bunch of logs to see what happened, who came into the system, what did they do, did they extract anything from us, did they exfiltrate any data from us, did they leave something behind that we're supposed to find and get rid of, are they still in the system, all of that information is found through logs. So very, very important. And then we're going to go into security solutions. So we are, I already mentioned SIM just now, which is Security Information and Event Manager. So these are very, very powerful tools that they ingest a lot of logs from a lot of different sources. And there's a lot of different types of SIMs. And you could pronounce it as SIM or SIM. I just like saying SIM because that's how I was taught. Um, and they essentially are very powerful software that ingest a lot of data coming from a lot of different sources and they put everything in one screen for you in the ver version, uh, in the format of a dashboard or uh, various types of data that you can kind of parse through and it helps you find the information that you need without having to lead, read line after line after line of log entries, which can be very overwhelming, even for the most technical person who is super OCD and loves reading data like that. It still can get really, really overwhelming if you have to go through thousands and hundreds of thousands of log items line by line. It's just not, uh, it's not, uh, efficient to be able to go through data like that. So SIMs are where that actually ends up becoming a very useful tool and it makes your life a lot easier as an analyst. 
and you have firewalls. So firewalls, another security solution and knowing how to configure a firewall, the different rules that have to do with firewalls and whether the Windows firewall or the Linux firewall, uh, all of that information, again, makes you a really good security analyst. It makes you a security administrator. So there's different people, right? There is a security administrator that is worried about the firewall and the configuration of the firewall. The security analyst looks at the stuff that's happening on the network and inside of the traffic to try to find information or find data that would be useful of, for example, we're being hacked or somebody's attacking us. Um, so those two roles are actually different and it's useful for you to know how to use the various tools that are assigned to each one of those roles. And then we have the intrusion detection system, so the IDS. And so that's gonna be something that we're gonna talk about. And there is open source IDSs, there is paid IDSs, and there's something called an IPS, which is an intrusion prevention or intrusion protection, depending on who you talk to. Um, and that specific tool operates very similar to an intrusion detection system, but the big element is that it'll take an action on your behalf. Uh, you have to pre-configure the action, obviously. You have to establish certain rules for it to know what to do once it detects something. But once something is detected, it can drop the connection for you. It can block that IP address. It can do a handful of things that become very useful so that whatever is going on, if you're not present, present to take care of it, the IPS will actually take care of it for you. And then finally, you have the vulnerability scanner. And the vulner vulnerability scanner is something that I think is more on the, the SOC center. It would be the security analyst, could be a security engineer uh, that takes a uh, point on the vulnerability scanner. And as the name implies, you're scanning for vulnerabilities within your network, within your systems, just to make sure that everything is up to par. And if you find vulnerabilities, your job is to patch them in advance. So that's what a vulnerability scanner is and what it does. And we're going to be learning how to use them. And we're just going to go through the overview of the vulnerability scanners. And then we're going to go into the defensive security tools. <laughs> so CyberChef, really, really powerful tool. We use this all the time in a lot of the videos. So if you've seen any of my videos on pen testing, or really, I feel like I've used it in probably at least like 50% of the videos that are on this channel. So CyberChef is a really powerful tool. It's kind of a GitHub repository extension kind of a thing because uh, you don't find it on going to cyberchef.com. You Google CyberChef, I'll just show you. You Google CyberChef and then a GitHub link shows up, but then it has a uh, uh, GUI. So it's like you see it right here. So it says it's a github.io. It's a page on GitHub technically, but when you click on it, it's not a series of code or a bunch of pages of code. It's literally a graphic user interface, and it'll actually do a lot of cool things for you. So, for example, if we do uh, google.com, and let's say we want to defang this domain name so that nobody can click on it. So you want to send it to your boss, and you want to say, hey, you know what? I need to uh, make sure that this IP address is not... Uh, clickable because it's a malicious IP address, right? I want to send this document to my boss and I don't want my boss to accidentally click on it. So you do defang, which is one of the recipes of CyberChef. So CyberChef has a bunch of recipes, right? And I'm probably jumping way ahead and I should wait until we actually go into the, the CyberChef course, but it basically does a lot of cool things for you. I probably shouldn't take all the steam away from the actual video that we're going to do, but we're going to talk about CyberChef. Uh, we're going to talk about Kappa. Uh, to identify malicious capabilities. I actually have not even heard of that before. So I'm excited to see what that even is because I've never heard of the Kappa rule. Uh, it sounds like something that would be in a fraternity or something like that. Uh, then we have Remnux. Um, again, no idea what that is. It sounds like it's a virtual machine. So learn how you can use the tools inside the Remnux virtual machine. And then Flare VM, which is, has its own arsenal of tools for uh, investigation. So this is actually really cool. I'm really excited about uh, these three specific rooms because I have not heard of these and that would be really cool for me to go through. See, see what I'm saying? I jumped in the deep end to try to get all the advanced stuff and I could get a lot of benefit from going through the basics. So very, very cool stuff. And last but not least, build your cybersecurity career. And this is not that just looking at the outline right here, this is not going to be anything about finding jobs, but it's more about understanding what goes into a job in cybersecurity. So understanding security principles, 
uh, understanding the various types of career paths that you can take and the training impact that would be applied to a team environment, whether you're the trainer or you're the trainee or you're a peer of somebody and they're going through training and you want to be helpful because you want to go into management, for example. So understanding the various principles and we're probably going to talk about frameworks as well at a certain point. And these are all very, very important for you to understand because it's not just about being good at a tool. Uh, the more you understand about cybersecurity and the deeper that you go into this, you understand that it's a very large web of frameworks and concepts and philosophies and tools and resources and specific techniques and tactics. All of these things come together to make somebody a useful security analyst, administrator, or pen tester, ethical hacker. So knowing what the overall scope is, what the, the big picture is, and then how all of those things connect to each other and make you a better cybersecurity person or professional, right? So this is what the whole concept of this entire pathway is supposed to be. It's supposed to make you understand that, number one, it's, yes, it is about the tools. It is about cracking password. It is about finding vulnerabilities. All of those things are very important. But the big, big thing to walk away from this is that there's, it's all woven into each other. They mesh together to make a full, uh, at least to give you a more comprehensive understanding. So you will not go through this entire pathway and this entire training series and all the videos that are going to come up. You're not going to go through all these videos and be like, oh, I, you know, I get it. I'm ready to go. That's not how it works. But you will really get a good understanding of, okay, so I get how these dots are connected. And if I wanted more information, how to go find the rest of that information. And there's a lot of videos that exist on this channel already that once you go through this training series, and as we start referencing the other tactics and the other tools that are going to come up, you'll be like, oh, I understand how Splunk fits into this whole thing. I understand how Snort fits into this whole, how John the Ripper comes in, how Metasploit comes in. I get how the MITRE attack framework plugs in. So this is, I think, the power of understanding the basics and the fundamentals of cybersecurity. And that's my entire goal with this entire training series is to give you an understanding of the basics, to give you the fundamentals, everything that we just discussed inside of this video, but to also help you learn how to learn. I want you to go and become good at researching at the end of this whole thing. I want you to get really good at finding what you need so that because I'm not going to be covering everything inside of this training series, it's impossible to do that. And it is this, it's literally titled 101. So obviously we're not going to go into the down the depths of the rabbit hole, but I want you to understand how to learn. I want you to learn to learn and learn to research and be able to find the information that you actually need so that whenever you're ready for it, you know exactly where to go to get what you want. And I think it's going to be amazing. I'm really excited about this. And I have to give another shout out to the man himself, Darnell Knight for, I don't know if that's his last name, but I'm just going to call him Darnell Knight, Mr. Knight. It sounds like a cool name. It sounds like a movie person name, movie star name. Um, we got to give a shout out to Darnell because if it wasn't for this comment, it wouldn't have come to the forefront of my mind because I've been thinking about doing this for a long time and it didn't, it wouldn't have come to the forefront of my mind for me to be like, you know what? I feel like this is the time to actually do this. So uh, I'm not going to be going, you know, gung ho with all this content. Like I said, it's going to be a once a week type of an upload. But at the very least, we have started down this path and you will get access to all of the basics for cybersecurity. So this is going to be the Cybersecurity 101, the SciSec 101 training series. And I'm super excited about it. If you haven't done so already, I very much encourage you to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out, especially if you're interested in the SciSec 101 training series. And then go just check out everything else that we got on the channel. There's literally over 200 videos that are on this channel that I've uploaded in less than a year. So we started this channel January of 2024, and there's a lot of great stuff that's already on here. Um, it is kind of sprinkled between intermediate, advanced, and beginner. So 
there is no direct path of finding things other than going through the actual playlist themselves and then watching the very first video on the playlist. So for example, the sock level one playlist is in order. So if you go chronologically to the very, very first video that's inside of that playlist and then just work your way down, you will be learning concepts that are connected to each other and they will get progressively more advanced as you go down that path, but they're not going to be broken down the way that I think this specific playlist is going to be broken down. And then there's the pen test playlist and then the security analyst, so on and so forth. So there's a bunch of playlists and there's a bunch of content. And if you haven't already done so, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, make sure that you actually are a part of the community so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out. And of course, drop a comment. If you drop a comment and if you have a question, I will answer your comment immediately. Uh, I am very, very good with responding to the comments. And if it's a really good one, if it's a big question, like Darnell asked, then we will dedicate a video to it, or in this particular case, an entire playlist and a training series will be dedicated to the question that Darnell asked. So shout out to Darnell one more time. But again, drop a comment. If you have any questions, drop a comment. I do respond to comments and I do create videos in response to comments. So I just, I wanna keep reiterating that so that people understand that I do check the comments out and I am serious about giving you what you actually need. And of course, there is the Hackaholics Anonymous membership community. And there's four tiers to this membership community, and it is a paid community. Um, but for the first tier, I actually recently just added the Discord channel as well, so that even if you join on the supporter tier, which is five bucks a month, if you come, I, I mispronounced month, five bucks a month. If you come in on the supporter tier, at $5 a month, $4.99 a month, you will get access to the Discord channel and you'll get access to myself as well as all of our advanced members that come in at Cyber Agents and Cyber Guardian. And you'll get to communicate with people who are very serious about this path of cybersecurity. And then you'll get a bunch of other perks if you actually join the advanced groups and the advanced tiers like Python automations and exclusive downloads and exclusive content and a lot of other great stuff. So if you don't want to watch the 14 minute video, which I think you should because it'll give you a really good story of what this thing was, the backstory of the origin story of Hackaholics Anonymous, but then you can also get all of the details of the perks. If you don't want to do that, click on this red more button or read more, <laughs> click on the read more button and then it'll open it up inside a new window and then you can go through the description and then you'll see the breakdown of every single thing that is inside of the perks of this amazing membership community. I love this community. It is my heart and soul to actually make sure that this community succeeds and gets really, really big and everybody kind of joins and helps each other out. And then there are some bigger goals down the line that I don't want to disclose right here, but it is something that I'm very, very excited about. And I really hope to see you inside of the Discord chats of the Hackholics Anonymous community. So if you haven't done so already, definitely go check it out and hopefully I'll see you there. So boy, Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite network and system attacker slash protector. Love, peace, and chicken grease. If no one else loves you, Hank loves you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.